Hello YouTube world, pretend farmer here. Not a real farmer, just pretending. We've raised multiple batches of chicks under a broody hen that she's hatched and incubated herself. And we've also done it to where we've incubated our own eggs or bought store-bought chicks and raised them up in our own brooder. This has prompted a lot of people to ask the pretend farmer, which way do you like better? Which one's easier? Do you like a broody hen? Or do you like brooding your own chicks in your own brooder? That's a really good question. There's pros and cons to both, and Pretend Farmer's gonna lay it all out for you this morning. You know, let's talk about the advantages of a broody hen. Conventional heat sources can be difficult to regulate and kind of costly to operate. Now, many people use brooder plates today, and they're pretty good, but you still have to worry about losing power or maybe the thing malfunctions or comes unplugged. Well, in that case, it could be pretty bad, depending on how cold it is and where you got your chicks at. With a broody hen, you kind of have that carefree advantage of being able to let her keep the chicks warm. She knows when they need to be warmed. They can go in and out of her feathers as needed. You don't have to ever worry about providing them with any kind of heat source. So that's a very handy thing to have with a broody hen. Here's some good footage of mommy chicken warming up her babies. Another nice thing about a broody hen is while you still have to keep up with their food and their water, whether you're brooding your own chicks or whether you're relying on a broody hen, there's still things you gotta do. But she takes care of a lot of things for you too. For example, you've all heard of pasty butt. A lot of times chicks will get poop caked over their, their vent, over their butt and it gets stuck in their fluff when they're real young. That can actually block them up and kill them if you don't get the obstruction removed. And when you got chicks in a brooder, you really gotta check them regularly for this the first two or so weeks. And you'll probably have to take care of one or two as far as removing that pasty butt. Not the case with a broody hen. You know, broody hens will actually be on the lookout for that. And if they see that starting to cake up, they'll take their beak and they'll peck it and they'll basically remedy that. So Mama Hen takes care of a lot of the things that you would have to do if you had a brooder. She incubates the eggs herself. She keeps the chicks warm after they hatch. She keeps an eye out for pasty butt and takes care of it as needed. And she looks out for the chicks. She offers protection. There's nothing more fierce than a broody hen that has fresh baby chicks that just hatched. Very protective mothers. Those chicks are also going to advance a lot faster with a broody hen in terms of what they can do. I've noticed that whenever I raise chicks up in a brooder and I throw them out into the coop, I've got to go out there for probably two and a half, three weeks and teach them how to go up the ramp to get into the coop. With a broody hen, it's a couple of days worth of training for her and they learn to follow her up the ramp. And so it seems like in a lot of ways like that, the chicks are more advanced. Now you've probably heard that chicks raised up in a brooder are a lot more tame and friendly overall than chicks brought up under a broody hen. And that's about half true. The reason I say half true is because out of the gate, yes, the chicks will be more flighty if you let the broody hen raise them. And that's just because in a brooder, you got a lot more handling time. And that's not to say you can't pick up chicks under a broody hen, but a lot of times you'll notice if you got a broody hen with chicks, as you approach, she's gonna kind of shy away from you. Those chicks are gonna run up under her for cover. She's gonna lead them away. If you try and get one, they're gonna squeak. She's gonna go crazy. It just gets to be a really big hassle, and ultimately, you're not gonna be handling those chicks as much as if you had them in your own brooder that you could walk up to anytime you want and grab one. So just for the simple fact that you're able to handle those chicks more when they're in a brooder, they're gonna get more familiar with you. They're gonna be a little bit more tame right from the get-go than chicks that are raised up under a broody hen. But that's not the end of the line because I'm here to tell you, we have chicks that were raised up in a brooder that are really not that friendly, don't really want a whole lot to do with us yet. And we have chicks raised up under a broody hen that we were able to feed some treats to and they ended up being really tame. So that's not to say that later on down the line when they move up into the pullet stage, they start separating from mama chicken. You can feed them treats, you can befriend them, 
and you can end up making them really tame, just like all the rest of your chicks that you raised up under a brooder. So I wouldn't say that arguing point is a deal breaker as far as the friendliness of how they're gonna turn out. So what are the advantages of a brooder then? A lot of people, even if they hatch chicks under a broody hen, they'll actually take those chicks away from her and put them in a brooder. Now to me, that seems kind of pointless because, well, if she's willing to do all the work for you, you might as well let her. But there are people that believe so much in using their own brooder and raising their own chicks, they'll take the chicks away from the mommy chicken whenever they hatch. Here on the pretend farm, I feel like, you know, she sat on those eggs 21 days. She's hatched them. She kind of deserves to have her time with her babies. And plus, I don't see the point in hooking up a heat source and setting up a brooder when she's willing to take care of all that for me. Really, the only advantages to a brooder are you're able to control the environment a lot more, your chicks are gonna be a little bit safer, and you do have a slight advantage on that bonding time, getting that early start. And while it's not totally hopeless down the road to befriend chicks that were raised up under a broody hen, you do have that slight advantage of the brooder where you can feed them out of your hand, you can hold them, pet them, they're gonna be a lot more familiar with you and a lot more comfortable with you right from the get-go if they're raised up in a brooder. And really, you know, other than that, there's not many advantages to using a brooder. The only time we would use a brooder here on the pretend farm is if there was a specific breed of chicken that we wanted to get and say we were ordering a dozen pullets from Murray McMurray Hatchery or somewhere like that and we didn't have a broody hen at the time or no options there, well then naturally, you have to create a brooder and throw them in there and brood your own chicks. So for reasons like that, brooding your own chicks, having a brooder set up, that's necessary from time to time. But anytime that we have a chicken that's willing to do it, we let her do it. You know, A, it's a lot easier to do that than try and break a broody hen. You've all seen the videos of people dunking their chickens in cold water and stuff, trying to get them to get snapped out of their broodiness. I've seen cases where that works, other cases, I've heard people say they go right back to it. It can be a pain in the butt trying to get rid of a broody hen. So letting them do it is an advantage in itself. And if you don't want or need the chicks, you can always find homes for them. There's always people looking for chicks. Even if it's just a barnyard mix and you're only selling them for a couple bucks a piece, or better yet, just give them away free. Doesn't cost you anything, you might as well. And what we often try to do here on the pretend farm is when we have a broody hen, we'll go out to the store and actually buy some specific breeds of pullets that we know what they're gonna be. And we'll throw those underneath of her when the eggs hatch. Most cases, the hen will adopt those chicks as she's done with the ones. We put three speckled Sussex and three Jersey Giants underneath of her this go round. And so she's raising up all those along with the other chicks that hatched, some which may be roosters. We don't know what they are yet. If there's a specific breed you're looking for and you got a broody hen, you can either get fertilized eggs and hatch them under, or you can go that route of putting the adopted chicks underneath of her so that way you know you're getting something that you actually wanted. A lot of advantages to a broody hen. You know, there's disadvantages in terms of the fact that it's gotta be on their timing. Sometimes you want chicks when they're not broody, but if you can catch one when she is broody, then in my opinion, that's the way to go. A broody hen, Hands down, it's the easiest way to have chicks. I'll take that any day over having a brooder just because it's a lot easier on the pretend farmer and I don't notice a huge difference ultimately in those chicks turning out any more skittish than the other chicks that I raise up in my own brooder. You just gotta work with them a little more when they get into that pullet stage. It's always fun watching chicks grow up into chickens, and I'd encourage everybody out there to do it. Raise your own. If you've never watched chicks grow up from day one all the way up to the time they're adults, it's a lot more fun than if you just buy somebody's chickens that are already laying off of Craigslist or something. I'd encourage everybody to do it. Until next time, this is the Pretend Farmer, signing out.